Friday night. So cheers to you guys. Raise those glasses high. We are here and we are talking about final order cutoff and it is last call and we're starting right now. What is going on guys? It is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. And this is The Last Call Show. We are talking about 10 books, our favorite 10 books that are heading final or a cutoff this coming Monday night, January 13th. Also, if you want to see that full final or cutoff list, head on over to simplemanscomics.com. We have the full list there for you. But we're going to get in to our 10 picks, starting with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 48. Now there is some confusion. It was on the last call list, but I will say this looks like it might have been pushed back to February 26th instead of February 5th. But either way, it's a great book. And we're here to talk about it because it looks like we have the return of a fan favorite character. At least that's what it says in the solicit, right, Jack? Right, and you can tell by cover A, uh, kind of showing that Bo staff that looks like we are going to get Kimberly Hart, the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, Pink Ranger from the Lord Draken universe, uh, who is known as the Ranger Slayer, uh, coming back into the fold with the Necessary Evil storyline, which is getting ready to wrap up. There's only a few issues left. We've been talking about this one for months. Um, I, speculation would be that where she is, Lord Draken isn't far behind. Um, so whether we see Lord Dragon this issue or the solicitation for 49 talks about the return of a villain, that could be where we see it. Either way, we're going to get the two most popular characters in the current Ranger universe returning. Um, this is what everything's been building up to. So this is exciting. If you've been on the Necessary Evil uh, or the Shattered Grid train, this is something that you're excited for. And I think there's big plans for Kimberly Hartbride, the, the Ranger Slayer, because... The free comic book day issues for next year have already been announced. And Boom Studios is releasing a Power Rangers, Ranger Slayer number one that reprints and retells all of the original stories of her first appearance. All of those issues from that original arc. So it looks like Boom really wants to educate the masses on this character. So um, great time. To, you can still get in on the ground floor with this character. Right. And there are three different covers for this right now. You got that regular cover A that Jack was just talking about. You have our favorite, and a lot of fan favorites, those Goni Montez foil cover variants, which are regular price. And then it looks like you got that 1 in 20 Chris Anka variant, which is like that sports trading card. We're not big fans of that, but it's hard to tell that it's a sports card unless you actually look at the back because it's got like the stats. Other than that, it looks kind of like a little crazy picture, right? Right, yeah, yeah. It, it, to me, it wasn't the hit that they were hoping for. I will say, having collected them through the arc, they do look cool together. Um, Better than the Instagram one, variants for GoGo -Go Power Rangers. For for sure. The thing I like about them is that they're depicting um, solo cover shots of the Omega Rangers, who are the newer team that was just recently created. So uh, you're getting some real kind of first cover appearances for some of these characters. Lately, if you've been following Marvel Comics or even on these shows, because we've talked a lot about these books, you're seeing a lot of Conan all over the place, and you're seeing Robert E. Howard's world come back to life. A bunch of new characters there. We're seeing them in multiple crossover events, multiple uh, miniseries comics. But here comes another one of Robert E. Howard's characters' creations in Dark Agnes number one. This has got three different covers for it. You have that regular cover. There's also a Becky Cloonan variant as well as an Alan Davis variant. The one thing I do like about this is it's actually written by Becky Cloonan. So you got that female protagonist written from a female point of view. That's one thing I'm actually looking forward to. And what's not to like about Robert E. Howard's universe? Right. And I think what you're seeing, too, is what we've talked about, Brian, throughout 2019 on the channel. Um, if you want success with any sort of a character in comics today, you've got to build out the world that surrounds that character. So we brought Conan in, and there was a lot of hype and a lot of fanfare. 
Um, and the early arcs were extremely successful, right? And now we've hit a point now where it's been a year, and we've got to figure out where to go from here. And Marvel seems to be making a concerted effort with the Serpent War miniseries and then another Serpent War miniseries that's been solicited. Um, and now Dark Agnes getting a solo series. And I think there's some other characters from the series that are going to be getting for, uh, uh, their own solo series. Really, this adds endless possibilities in my eyes for what Conan as a character could be. Um, it, it may not be far-fetched that we one day see uh, a Marvel-made movie on the big screen with Conan if they can continue to make these characters more well-known, more popular, um, and build out some more modern uh, written stories. Yeah, one thing I'm interested in, especially I want to ask the viewer is, I won't say MCU, but what are the chances that we see, I don't know who has the film rights, if Marvel has the film rights yeah. or whatever, but if we see like a new Conan type universe being created in, in theaters as well, that's kind of anxious to see. They they tried briefly a while back with a new Conan movie. It, it was entertaining, but it didn't quite take off like we all know those classic Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. Yeah, I don't think Marvel has the film rights. I don't think um, Disney does. Uh, I could be wrong, but... I'm sure, you know, you talk about Disney, the ability to acquire it if they truly wanted that as a part of their IP portfolio to go along with everything else Marvel. Yeah, and I think outside the Marvel Universe would be awesome. Um, and then you never know. No surrender happened, right? So... Here we have Agrasuko number one. I'm sure I probably butchered that name. This is outside of my wheelhouse, but I do see why we have this in our pick for last call. This is an anime type book based off a Netflix series. And we know how some of those fanfare, especially those cartoon books. I'm not saying this is the next Rick and Morty, but this is one book to maybe pay attention for because it might fall under people's radar. And some of those shows have really big cult filings. This has two covers for it as well. But Jack, what about this book? Well, you know, Brian, it's funny you mentioned Rick and Morty, and it's a dangerous comparison to make because of the success of Rick and Morty, both on a pop culture level and within comics. But it's really the true comparison to make here. Now, we're not saying that this book is going to achieve that kind of levels of success, but it, it is in that wheelhouse of a book that it is by a popular, it's of a popular cult franchise something that mainstream comic collectors aren't going to pay attention to. Now, this isn't Brian and my cup of tea. Um, this is not the type of book we usually cover. This was a lighter week, but we wanted to highlight a book um, through all of our years of investing and looking at modern comics that we've done well with um, some of these outside the, the box picks. And this is a great book to highlight because the average comic buyer, I think a lot of comic shops are going to ignore this one. Um, I'm not a big anime manga guy. I don't know much about it, honestly, at all. But what I do know is when I'm shopping for Funko Pops, I see these licensed Funko Pops all the time. Um, I see the products in stores. I see the products at comic conventions. I know that this is a, um, a popular manga that has a, like, I think a three-year running Netflix um, licensed show um, that's done very very well and it looks like products are going to continue to come out uh there was a lot of fanfare surrounding the announcement of this series and again omnipress this the actual publisher who makes rick and morty is making this series so can they get lightning in a bottle twice probably not but honestly this is a book that could easily be a 15 dollars book because it just the supply outweighs the demand especially if the true fans of this property aren't aware that this comic is releasing they will buy it up after release and the aftermarket will go up yeah it's always weird to watch that pattern because a lot of people pick up books yeah. waiting for something to be optioned when here you have it in the reverse but either way there's a fan base out there only press from my experience especially if you're looking to like resale or however you want to look at there's uh come out hot but then they kind of fizzle out but either way this is one thing that some readers or viewers, they might even be fans of the show and not aware that there's a comic book that's coming out for it, but it's hitting final cutoff this Monday night. Mm -hmm. 
Mortal Hulk Great Power number one. We see in this issue, it looks like Hulk leaves Bruce Banner, or Bruce Banner thinks he's free from the Hulk. But it turns out Hulk's actually become Spider-Man, right? We get like basically Spider-Hulk. But it's going to have two covers for it. Yeah, that regular cover. Then it looks like a regular price variant for this. But I also believe there are some store exclusives out there floating around for this book as well. Yeah, KRS Comics, for one I know, has a really cool variant set that uh, homages Venom number one from 2011 has uh, Venomized uh, uh, Spider-Hulk. Um, but yeah, this when this series got announced, we saw the back issue spike of Web of Spider-Man number 70, which is kind of the first appearance of this look of a Spider-Hulk character. Um, and that book became a real popular back issue. It was selling for about $15 to $20 at the time. That's kind of come down to earth at this point. But you never know what this is. This is a little gimmicky, but look at how all the Venomized stuff has done. Um, you never know. And another interesting note about Spider-Hulk is when the to commemorate like the to the web of Spider-Man issue in that kind of character and, and that era, um, there was actually an action figure made of Spider-Hulk that regularly sells for about $100 to $150 mint on a card. So if you're ever at a flea market, swap meet, a uh, local comic shop, and you see that one cheap, be sure to buy that one. It's actually a pretty tough find at this point. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to be as agile being Hulk and Spider-Man. The solicit says he is, but be anxious to see. It'd be like me flying around on big old spider web. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be mistaken for a Macy's float at that point. <laughs> <laughs> As we've been talking a lot about Star Wars lately, not even on this channel, but between anything pop culture, we talk about it almost all in every video now between the movie, between Mandalorian. But this is Darth Vader number one returning again. Just like Star Wars number one, this kind of takes place right after Empire Strikes Back. And it looks like this one, Darth Vader's having a hard time dealing with Luke Skywalker rejecting him when he told him he was his father, right? Right, so this is just like uh, Star Wars, we're getting a time jump, so we're going to reboot the series. But it's actually kind of unfortunate. The last Darth Vader series, um, by a lot of accounts, was a stronger kind of reader, consistent reader buzz series than the actual main title Star Wars line. So it'll be interesting to see if that trend continues as we go, come over to these new rebooted series. But we're coming on the heels of this Kylo Ren miniseries being just really just hot fire. Um, there's some momentum behind Star Wars and comics. We're seeing some of the Dark Horse back issues pop. You and I did a video, Brian, talking about five back issue bolos to be on the lookout for books. Um, the first appearances by Star Wars, and literally right before we started recording this, we were just talking that like first appearance of Kylo Ren hasn't taken off yet. But I think really anything is possible. So I, I think that these second volumes of the Star Wars books, I think, will have a much smaller print than the original volume when Marvel brought them back in 2015. Uh, could have some books to keep an eye out for, especially those ratio variants. Right. And this is going to be a huge long shot. But we we always reference the experience of like how TV Mandalorian right now is hot on Disney+. Plus. The new Star Wars movie, take it or leave it. But I think another resurgence that people might not be aware of is you got two huge Star Wars lands at Disneyland and Disney World right now, not to mention that huge ride, Rise of the Resistance, that's been open at Disney World that I'm talking like as soon as the park opens, you can't get on the ride because the queue's been full for the whole day. So there might be people going and visiting some of these lands, some of these parks also as well, getting that Star Wars bug coming back, and then they just want to go ahead and read on it. Not to mention, they're selling Marvel books at Disney World. So some of these books are going to be there. So there's an interest there. And I'm Darth Vader's one of the best villains out there. And like I, I like you said, I enjoyed the Darth Vader series more than the Star Wars series, which because of that, I didn't read much of Star Wars because I wanted to read Darth Vader more. Either way, new number one, written by Greg Pak, art and on it's by Mike DeMundo. There is a pretty sweet Mike DeMundo variant. That's the one I kind of want to pick up. And 
sticking with Marvel, we have Magnificent Miss Marvel number 12. Now, there's been a lot of reader buzz on the past few issues and some earlier back issues, especially with the whole new reveal that's been going on. But this one, to me, doesn't seem like it might hold the same amount of buzz. But either way, we've been talking about this title. So it's important to know that issue number 12 is hitting final cutoff Monday, right, Jack? Right, and we're and we're kind of like full on into the Storm Ranger uh, storyline, so I think that's where you know you're gonna see some of that buzz die down. And again, this is all about world building for Miss Marvel, the, trying to get more characters who can um, be kind of synonymous with her as a kind of a villain. So we'll see, we'll see if this this takes long term, and that's gonna spell the success of Magnificent Miss Marvel number five and number 10 long term as far as uh, first appearance value but either way uh, this is a, a reader buzz pick like Brian mentioned because we've seen it with Captain Marvel once you have a kind of a big issue that draws a lot of attention the next few issues will gain some momentum from people who just want to continue to read the story that they were just introduced to with that landmark event so I think that's what's happening here with Magnificent Miss Marvel. Even Marvel moving over to DC for a second, we get Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey number one. I think this is a key marketing move by DC because we just had the second trailer for Margot Robbie's Birds of Prey movie. Now we're getting another issue number one, but I have my reservations because it is written by Amanda Connor with art by Amanda Connor, but there is an Arthur Adams B cover for this. Right, and this series has been announced and canceled and announced and canceled, and it's kind of gotten the run around. They're definitely trying to time it with the release of the movie, um, kind of get some buzz going, get people, at least within the comics community, talking about Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey together, because it is kind of a, a natural pairing that was done for the movie's sake, so now they're trying to bring it over into the, the publishing side. Um, but, you know, I don't expect this one to fare extremely well, Um I, th I kind of agree with your uh, undertoned sentiment about Amanda Connor, um, who I don't have an issue with. I just, I'm just really done. We've talked about it on the channel. I'm really done with that Harley Quinn. Uh, I think that's why some of the black label Harley Quinn stuff has done so well, because people want something different. Um, if this is in tune with what I've seen from the movie, I'm not that interested in this, but Again, let us know in the comment section if this is a series you're ready to pick up uh, if uh, we're being a little harsh, but let us know. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say it's being harsh. I, I would just fully admit that I think you and I are not the key demographic that this book right, is working right. for. <laughs> Here we get Kevin Eastman's Totally Twisted Tales Volume 1. This is like an anthology trade paperback full of Kevin Eastman. Like it title says, Twisted Tales. We get like, what, four full stories in this? It's a trade paperback. MSRP is, what, $13? So that's another key reason why we like to put stuff like this in this final word cutoff video. Because a lot of times if you pre-order, you could save a little money off that MSRP. But I know this is one book that Jack was like, super excited to talk about. Well, yeah, I'm a big Kevin Eastman fan, and I think that this is a book that has a chance to kind of go under the radar. Um, now, it may be reprinted. That's really going to be the key question with this book as far as collectible value is how is the printing handled. This is coming from Clover Press. Um, Clover Press is a small press uh, publisher who's most notable within the market um, for actually two exclusive variants that they produced. They produced a Kevin Eastman um, Deadpool uh number one and a kevin eastman uh x-men number one variant um and that's kind of like what they've been kind of known for their books have been sold through midtown comics as well um but e kevin eastman signed a publishing deal with them to release this uh team up with bisley and you know simon bisley's most known for his work with lobo some of those iconic old school lobo lobo covers from uh the the 90s um, but they also worked together previously on kind of an iconic Elseworlds uh, Ninja Turtle story called Body Count, which was a very 
kind of graphic and raw Raphael Casey Jones kind of team up story that is everything like an adult Ninja Turtle fan would love. So there's a history here with these two um, and they're coming together to tell three original stories. Um, the solicitation talks about uh, monsters, uh, superheroes, um, uh, horror. It sounds like it's going to have a little bit of everything uh, within this uh, this volume one. And that's the other key. It's, it says volume one. So there's um, it seems like there's going to be more after that. I I wouldn't think that um, a ton of these are going to be ordered being from a small press. Uh, this isn't going to have great placement in the previews magazine. Um, like I said, the key is how it's printed, but I don't think it's a book that's just going to be like open print because they're doing two covers for it. It looks like they're trying to create some collectability um, and some value there. So it's something to keep an eye out for. Back over to the big two with Marvel, we have X-Men vs. Fantastic Four number one. Normally, I'd be probably totally turned off by this book, but I actually love the creative team on this. We got Chip Zdarsky and Terry Dotson, so I'm on board, at least probably through one issue. I can't promise I'll keep reading past that. Fantastic Four and X-Men are both, like, not really my favorite characters in the Marvel Universe, but either way, huge fan of Chip Zdarsky. Everyone knows Daredevil is probably like my favorite book to read right now. Chip Zdarsky's killing it, but that's enough about that. Jack, tell us more about this book. Well, yeah, this is the it's actually the second volume, if you remember. Um, there is previously um, old school. We're talking that late eighties, early nineties. Um, found in every dollar bin. Uh, yeah. Fantastic Four versus the X Men series. It's a four issue uh, miniseries, and if you're absolutely pressed to get right now. You can jump on eBay and get it for about ten dollars shipped. So um, I don't have high hopes for this series, to be honest with you. Um, I do think that that Marvel is trying to get us used to seeing these characters together as we enter a phase of the MCU where we're probably going to see both of these teams introduced at the same time. There is a good chance that we're going to see more of a crossover between these two teams than we're traditionally used to. Um, so I think that this is really some clever marketing at this point by Marvel, but I don't have a lot of faith really for the long-term success of the series. But I, I get why they're doing it. Yeah, and I do like the regular cover, A. Terry Dotson, and then, of course, that Mark Brooks cover. I mean, if you're looking just for cover art by itself, those two are, like, really great covers. But I'm with you. <laughs> no high hopes. But either way, it'd be interesting to check out. Yeah, and I totally agree about Chip Zdarsky as well. Then the last book we're going to talk about tonight is Batman number 88. The trains left the station. We got that first James Tinian issue under our belts. This is number 88. It's coming up, hitting final or cutoff Monday night. This is going to be released February 5th, of course. But Batman's going to Arkham to talk to Penguin. And we got Batman Battle and Deathstroke. All types of crazy stuff's going on here, Jack. Right. But interestingly enough, what's not mentioned is the two first appearances from 86 in the solicit for 88. So the question is, will we learn more about these characters? Um, will that happen in 87? Um, are these throwaway characters that maybe people were falsely excited for? Um, and that's kind of the beauty of whether you're a reader like us, you and I, we're reading Batman no matter what, right? That's just a regular monthly read for us. But if you're not and, you know, you're trying to play the first appearance game, that's where reading really pays off is being able to kind of project the future by seeing where a writer is trying to take you. Um, it'll be interesting to see if James Tinian is going to do any of that. But either way, that Matina cover B is absolutely sick. I really love that cover. Um, I, 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 you don't see too many uh, penguin covers and you see even less that are real visually appealing. And that one's killing yeah, it's almost like, I don't want to say that broken glass type look, but... Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of played with these kind of covers before. Um, uh, and yeah, he just... He does Batman so well with the, the kind of like the dark look to most of those covers. So there it is. Those are the 10 books that we have for Final Art Cutoff this week. Before we get into naming those additional printings, last week we announced the contest that we were running. 
And we asked you to comment on that video. What were your 2020 comic book resolutions? And we would pick a random comment, random person to win. One was this awesome Simple Man's Comics beanie to keep your scalps nice and warm in the winter time. And we also have this awesome X-Force number one variant from Frankie's Comics, channel sponsor here. I always try to get it out of the glare there. This is the Ji Hung Lee variant. That was what the contest was for to comment for the beanie and that Frankie's variant. And we put them all in a list on random.org, spun the list, and the person that came out on top was Marco Hernandez. He commented 2020 resolution is cut back a little on his pool list and try to keep up on that Ninja Turtle run with the new Jenica starting soon. Love the show. Happy New Year's and HTTR. For those that aren't familiar, that means hail to the Redskins. But either way, congratulations to Marco Hernandez. Send us an email at simplemanscomics at gmail.com. Give us your mailing address and we will get that beanie and comic book out in the mail to you. And if you didn't win, stay tuned because we're going to be running more contests between this video, the Bolo Show. We got a bunch of contests planned, a bunch of giveaways coming up. So tune into those shows and you never know when you get a chance to win it. Or if you want some of those Frankie's variants, they come out every month in that premium Bolo box, right, Jack? Absolutely. Yeah, that Eisner level Bolo box. Um, we're, we're giving away Frankie's variants in these boxes every month. Um, and we're working with other uh, channel sponsors, with other partners to get those boxes as loaded with exclusive variants as physically possible. So be on the lookout for those. Um, and you can get that at uh, patreon.com forward slash Simpleman's Comics. Yes, we, we want to say Frankie's is the anchor of those bolo boxes, but we have Nick at Slabbed Heroes starting to give us some books. We are putting in some CBSI, comic book speculation investing.com variants in those. And we got other people that we're working with. We're always trying to make that box better. So if you're interested in signing up and supporting the channel, like you said, head over to patreon.com forward slash Simpleman's Comics and choose that premium bolo box tier. Yeah, and if you're a retailer out there as well and uh, you want to, uh, get involved with advertising through the uh, Bolo Box program. Get in touch with us, too, at the email that Brian mentioned earlier, um, and we can see what we can do. But with that being said, again, congratulations to Marco, but we need to talk about what additional printings are coming out for this final or cutoff, Jack. Well, there's a bunch of them, Brian. Some of them in specific are ones to keep an eye out for, just like we had last week. Uh, Boom Studios is bringing two. They're bringing Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, the second print. And this is kind of a cool cover. At first glance, it may look like just a recolored background. But actually, the first print has the day look. The second print has the night look in the cityscape. Kind of a unique cover. Um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two, the second print. Uh, for you Goni Montez helmet collectors, this is one to be on the lookout for. This is going to be part of that set. Uh, this is going to be one you're going to want to grab. Uh, IDW is coming with Star Trek Picard number two, the second print. Um, and then Marvel, of course, you know they're coming with a bunch. Uh, we've got Avengers 28, the second print. Excalibur number four, the second print. Uh, one to keep an eye out for for Marvel is Hawkeye Freefall number one, the second print. Cover art has already been released for that. Um, and it looks like you're getting that new Ronin appearing right on the cover. Uh, we have Marauders number five, the second print. Xbook's doing extremely well. Spider Ham number one, the second print. And finally, uh, good to see some indie love here. Small Press Vault Comics. Uh, they're releasing Money Shot number one, the third print. Money Shot number two, the second print. And Money Shot number three, the second print, getting you caught up just in time for issue number four. And there's good reason for all those multiple prints of Money Shot. If you haven't been reading Money Shot from Vault Number, definitely get, check it out. That one that I was sitting there watching TV, my wife was reading that book, and she was sitting there actually laughing out loud on the couch. And I was like, what is going on? I looked over and see her read a Money Shot. But either way, great comic book. And those are all the additional printings. But again, if you want to see that full final order cutoff list, we're talking comic books. We're talking toys we're talking statues we're talking uh sports or trading cards it's all on that final word cutoff list at simplemanscomics.com and be sure to check out our newest video in that back issue bolo series where we're looking at five 
New Mutants back issues to be on the lookout for just in time for that New Mutants trailer that dropped this week. So for Jack and Brian from Simple Men's Comics, we'll see you in the next video.